Dr. Oz. Before you take that next bite, Dr. Oz reveals the five eating habits making you fat. People don't even realize that they're doing it. The hidden ways you could be ruining your diet. That's about 20 pounds of weight gain if you're not cautious about it. How to spot the sabotage. I mean, it looks like bait. It's like a bottomless pit. And change the way you eat forever. If you can give me 15 minutes, we can change your life. Next. change the way you think about your next meal. So get comfortable, because you're not going to want to miss this. Every single day, we make hundreds of food decisions, yet most of us are completely in the dark about what influences how much we eat. So, for the first time in the show's history, we conducted a series of experiments to show you firsthand how your eating habits are making you fat. Now, you're going to be shocked to see what you eat and how much more you eat than you think you are. But first, take a look at why we're all guilty of something called mindless eating. Does the size of your plate influence the amount of food you eat? Is it possible that your food's packaging can actually make you like it better? Can a clear bowl of candy really motivate you to take more? The answer to all of these is yes. These are examples of the hidden psychological cues that can persuade you to overeat in what is called mindless eating. And it could be the reason you're packing on the pounds. Because our stomach takes 20 minutes to register that it's full, you can chew through an entire bag of corn chips watching your favorite TV show long before you realize how many calories you've actually consumed. So what are the top five mindless eating habits making you fat? These seemingly innocent triggers just may surprise you. <laughs> Joining me is nutrition and weight loss expert, Dr. Ravinia Brock. Dr. Brock, welcome. But probably for how much of why we overeat is because of this mindless eating? Well, everyone does it, so a lot, okay? And the thing is, people don't even realize that they're doing it. It sneaks up on them. Absolutely. So how do you break the habit? Well, you know, the first thing is you want to retrain yourself to go from unhealthy, mindless eating habits mm -hmm. to healthful, mindful eating habits. Control your environment at home and away. Mm -hmm. If you don't eat it, you don't eat it. It shouldn't be there. So we're going to make this really concrete for everybody. We've got five habits that we believe are making you fat. Learning how to break them, which we're going to do today, it's going to help you lose weight starting tomorrow. We're going to show you exactly how to do this. So this is important stuff, everybody. Now, we've staged different scenarios, some of them with the help of our audience members to help identify the different habits that are making all of us heavier than we need to be. So Lisa's here to help you deal with the first one. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Hi. All right, the first, scenario, the first scenario is the kitchen pantry. So look out over there. Right. And can, to help me, if you can, identify what do you think is the unhealthy habit of the person who stacked that pantry? And audience, look at that carefully. We'll put it up on the big screen. Folks at home, you know, see if this looks like yours. <laughs> Anything stand out it to really you? It really does. Um, the the fat-free, the reduced fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You all see that? Yep. I mean, we put it here, but fat-free, fat-free, low fat, low. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like bait, yeah. right? It's exactly. basically it is chumming bait. the waters. Mm -hmm. right? It's out there. It makes you feel very comfortable. So, right. how much do these low-fat labels, Lisa, motivate you to buy a product and to eat it? Uh, it definitely does. I go to the supermarket, the first thing I'll look at is the low fat, the 100 calories, reduced fat. Right. Those are the first things that I usually pick. Does it make you feel safer to buy those things? Yeah, it does. It makes, well, it makes me think that I can eat actually a little more just because it's a little right. less. <laughs> can I, can I sure. give you a statistic that might scare you a little bit? Sure. It's an incredible fact. Since we have cut down on fat in the foods, mm -hmm. these kinds of low fat labels are indicative of that. And this is you know, a big food craze started about 30 years ago. The obesity rate in this country has more than doubled. Wow. Wow. So I can't say it's causing it, but I'm telling mm -hmm. you, they're very closely linked, and we're going to do some stuff today that's going to, I think, nudge you in the direction of believing that might be partly responsible for tricking a lot of us. Okay. So, Dr. Rowe, 
Why, as a scientist, would you believe that low-fat food labels might be a problem for us? Well, you know, first of all, at least it said it best. When you see low-fat on, on a label, mm -hmm. you get a green light to think that you can eat more because you think um, that it costs you less in calories. But here's right. the thing. Low-fat doesn't mean low-calorie, right. and it doesn't mean that it's fat-free. So, mm -hmm. and other, the other thing is what manufacturers lose when they take the fat out, they make up for in sugar. Right. They add more sugar, they add more salt, and sometimes they even add more flour to hit the taste and texture that you expect to get. Now, I would gather, Lisa and mm -hmm. others in the audience, you've probably heard this argument before. Okay. So we decided to take it one step further. Take a look at what happened when we set up a hidden camera experiment to explore this idea. Inspired by a study done by the Cornell University Food and Brand Lab, we thought we'd have a little fun and see if we'd get similar results. Would a low-fat label make a difference in how much people eat? First, we set up hidden cameras in our conference room. Then we packaged low-fat snack mix into individual bags to look homemade. Each bag was filled with two cups. One set of bags was labeled low-fat, the other regular. Finally, we invited two groups of people to our lab, telling them they were there to watch the show and give us feedback. The group of 10 people seated in the back two rows was given the snack mix labeled regular. The 10 in the front two rows were each given a bag of snack mix labeled low-fat. As the two groups watched, it looked like many were enjoying our snack. But would the low-fat group really eat more? After everyone left, we carefully marked and then measured the weight of each bag to see how much snack mix had been eaten. The results? The group of people given the bags labeled low-fat did eat more, nearly 65% more than the second group. This means that each person consumed about 80 more calories, in spite of the low-fat label. I absolutely adore this. It shows exactly how low-fat labels give us a false belief that we can eat more. Lisa, just what you said. So I'm going to have you to do one more little experiment for me, just to sure. finish it all off, okay? Uh, I've got two cookies here. Okay. Okay, low-fat and regular variety. I want to see if you can taste the difference. Okay, so take oh. a bite of the low-fat cookie. Mm. It's, it's okay? Yeah, but, but look at look. The, here's the benefit. Low-fat cookies mean... Only 50 calories a cookie. Okay. Okay, now taste the regular one. <laughs> now be honest here. It's a little bit better? No, it tastes about the same. Tastes about the same? Mm -hmm. All right, see the penalty you pay with a regular cookie. Go ahead and flip it over. 53 calories, folks. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's three calories difference. Mm -hmm. Three. Three. <laughs> Are we all clear on this? The reality is low-fat versions of Whole Foods are not a heck of a lot lower in calories than the regular version. So they may taste similar because right. they've been able to fix it up a little bit, but you're changing what you have and, and what you're getting in return for that. And that's a penalty you don't want to pay. And here's why. Okay. This is an animation that, that I don't want you to ever forget. Okay. Right? When you eat food that has, let's mm -hmm. say, fats in it, it goes into your stomach, and those fats, you know, it takes a while to get them through the stomach. The stomach has to struggle to get them to go on. They've got all kinds of other nutrients in them as well. So the body slowly meanders its way, pushes them down. Now, sugar's different. Sugar fills the stomach, and it's like on the gas pedal. The stomach's trying to get it out. Out. There's no staying power. Stomach spasms it out, and as that peristalsis pushes it down through the small intestine, the sugar goes right up into your body, up into your brain, rushes through you, and the body has to respond. What does it do? The pancreas starts secreting those green little dots, which are insulin, and as the insulin goes out to all the far reaches of your body, it shoots down the sugar by pushing it into your fat. Right? And that causes that sugar low because as you get hypoglycemic, you're right. not quite so alert. Right. So, Dr. Rowe, how do folks get past this low-fat diet obsession? Well, I think the first thing is to pump the brakes. When you see low-fat on a label, that should be a clue, okay? Mm -hmm. if it's, but if it's a whole food, a natural food, not something that's processed and in a box or a bag, like these low-fat dairy products, they can be a part of a, a good part of a healthy diet. Low-fat okay. yogurt, milk, um, low-fat cheese. Mm -hmm. Other than that, pump the brakes when you see it on a right. label for a, bar, a bag or a box for these processed foods. Foods. And this is just to point out, this is one and two percent low-fat milk. This is not skim milk. Oh, okay. There's a difference. 
God. Back to the animation. It's the exact same scenario. And once you understand that principle, which I mm -hmm. hope you're clear on now. Yes, I am. Right? You can <laughs> use it for the rest of your life. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate so much. it. All right. Evelyn is here to help you heal the second habit. Okay. How are you, Evelyn? Uh, nice to meet you. Dr. Rowe. Hello. All right. Hi. So we have a typical dinner scenario taking place right over there with a group of audience members who are voraciously eating through their lunch. Okay. Hey, can you guess or even spot... What is making them heavy? What is making everybody in America a little bit fatter? Well, it's going to have to be... Can you give me a clue? Uh, you don't have to be very close to see it. Uh, you notice there are five of them sitting there together, eating together? Socially, yeah. Yes, the second habit making us fat is that yes. we eat with others. Yes. Now, I know that's a big pill to swallow. We're going to talk about that in a second. But Dr. Rowe, talk a little bit about how eating with other people influences how much we eat. I love the way she went socially. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, the what whole a... <laughs> thing, the whole thing is that when, you know, we're social human beings. We're social beings. Exactly. People are. But when you eat with others, you tend to pick out. You see them pick out, so you eat more. You consume more calories than you actually realize you're consuming. And you put yourself on an instant seafood diet. You right. seafood, you eat it. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All right. Let's say you're eating by yourself. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rowe, give an example of how much a normal meal might entail. That, that's a you know, couple two and a half meatballs. You know, it's not a bad okay. meal for you to have, all right? Sure. Now, let's say you eat with just one other person. Dr. Rowe, please demonstrate how much you are likely to eat just with one friend. Mm. Yeah. See that difference? Mm -hmm. That's about 35% more food, everybody. I believe it. Just the fact that you're eating with each other. All right, go on to do this one. Let's say you're having dinner with another couple. Okay. Right, the four of you together. Oh my God. Guess what? 75% more. Oh my goodness. And let's say it's a big event, a real get together. Seven people. Seven right? people. Guess what? 96% more food. Ouch. This is a banquet food. Yeah, that's. Right? Um... Compare these if you don't mind. Oh my God. Look at the difference we're talking about. That is not subtle. So the average person in America will eat out with a group of folks about three times a week, right? If you do that, after a year, 72,000 calories. Mm -hmm. That's about 20 pounds of weight gain if you're not cautious about mm -hmm. it. Wow. So Dr. Rowe, how do you manage to eat with other people and not blow your diet? Yeah, I, and, and the whole point is you don't, you want to live well. So here's the thing, what you do is you, you want to pace yourself with the slowest eater at the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to start, you be the last one to start eating. That's okay. Yeah. Or even to serve yourself. To even serve yourself. Yeah. And so yeah. you don't keep up with the fastest paced eater though. Mm -hmm. At the table, pace yourself. That what helps. do you think? Absolutely. Makes sense. You get it, you, you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> I like it, Evelyn. Good. Yeah, Don't definitely. try to do it. You can do it. I'm gonna do, do, it. It. I'm gonna do right. it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marisol's here. Help me build a third habit. Hi. Welcome, Marisol. Hi. All right, Marisol. Hi. Hi. Now, Hi. Okay. What, we're having a typical living room mm -hmm. scenario over here with an audience member. Right. All right. So, Marisol, I want you to look over there and uh -huh. spot the habit that might be making her heavy. What do you think? Um. Hmm. She's eating a lot of chips. She's eating chips. And what she's doing while she's eating the chips? She's working. She's working. All right, so the third habit that's making mm -hmm. us all fat is that we multitask. Mm -hmm. And when we meal multitask, it really throws us into the, in, into the jailhouse when we try to go on diet. So Dr. Rowe, talk to us about multitasking and quantities of food. Well, the, the thing is, you're not aware of how many calories you're taking in while you're doing everything else. And meal mul multitasking is doing anything in addition to eating. So it's working at the computer, it's watching television. It's, and here's something that I'm gonna issue. You've heard of a DWI, right? Yeah, I have. I'm gonna, no. Dr. Not Austin personally, I, not personally. You, but you've heard of it. Yes. But, well, we're gonna issue DWEs to, and to everyone who's guilty of this, driving while eating. Marisol, do you DWE? Is that um, I do that. I do multitask a lot when I'm eating. I am standing up by the counter mm -hmm. in the kitchen. I'm preparing the meals, and I'm not actually sitting down mm -hmm. eating a healthy meal with my kids. Yeah. 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 Which throws us off. So back to the multitasking issue, Dr. Rowe. You know, folks are busy as stink. <clears throat> they don't have a lot of time to sit down yes. and have long meals. So what's the solution that might help? Here's what, what I need you to do. Yes, everyone needs to eat. We want you to eat and concentrate on that meal. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have like a long time, some people think it takes a half hour or longer to have a sit down meal. Yeah. Not so. If you can give me 15 <laughs> minutes, we can change your life. Mm -hmm. In 15 minutes, I just want you to take 15 minutes from your day to sit 
down and enjoy your meal and without being distracted by other forces. Yeah, right. you know, I love the way you describe that. I never thought about it that way, but most of us do think, I always thought the meal was a half an hour, 45 minute commitment. 50 minutes of concentrated effort is better than 45 minutes working at the computer while you're eating. Right. Yes. Fair enough? Crystal, yes, thank you very thank much. You. All right. Thank you. Very much. Finally, Lucy's here. Hi, Lucy. Hi, how are you? To help us with our fourth habit. Hi. Now, we have a typical scenario over here, right? Okay. Uh, we've got a woman at the kitchen counter. Yeah. And uh, Lucy, I want you to spot the bad habit that is making her fat. Mindless eating? Well, I mean, it's all she, mindless, but what's, what specifically she's she on the phone. She's not paying attention to what she's really eating. And, and what's she and doing? she's eating out of the bag. Yes. That's not, you're familiar with that? Yes. You, you do. You've been yes. there before. Every night. <laughs> the fourth habit making us fat is that we eat straight out of the package. Dr. Rowe, why is package to mouth so dangerous? Don't ever, ever eat straight out of the package because there's no way that you can just, you can approximate what servings, how many portions that you're getting when you do that. It's like a bottomless pit. Yeah. There was research done at Cornell University. They got a whole uh, food and brand lab, and they showed that people who eat right out of their bag eat 134 calories more than folks who eat out of a bowl. Oh Just putting it into a bowl makes 134 calories difference. These are big numbers, folks. Yeah. These add up pretty quickly. So, Dr. Rowe, what's the key to breaking this habit? Well, the first thing is you want to package. You want to plate it, then eat it. So put your food on small plates. Even if you're going to go to the television set, uh, put it on small plates in small containers. Take your snacks. Um, you might want to buy them in bulk to mm -hmm. save money in this economy. Yes. But put them in small Ziploc bags and then take those so that you know you're only having a serving at the time that you sit to eat. That's a great idea because I usually just take my bag and sit in front of the TV and just when I and when your favorite it, it's gone. Your favorite <laughs> program is over, so is the bag or yes, the box. Yes, yes. You know, what, what I love about what we're talking about now is, is that it's happening to all of us in our homes all the time. I mean, that's why I want to do this show so passionately. So when we come back, I'm going to talk about the number one habit that could be making you fat. You're not going to believe what happened when we set up a hidden camera experiment to explore it. It left me speechless. It's pretty hard to do that. Stay with us. Coming up. It floored me to think that it would affect our taste buds in a way that might make us eat more. The shortcut to weight loss that could actually sabotage your diet. You start to crave foods. What our hidden camera revealed. We don't realize how much we are actually eating. The number one habit that could be making you fat next.